He does this stuff. It's happening. It's happening right now. All right, we're doing. We're hunting the. Uh, what are we hunting? Fephoids. Fephoids. We're hunting Fephoids, and I don't know where we are. Uh, we're at Fort Fury. I would like to say welcome to all the people that met us here at the teleporter. Which is Steve-O and me. But that's okay, because we're going to go they, stuff anyway. We're, gonna, we're still going to do it. And if, <laughs> if no one shows up, I'm going to give Terraria to Steve-O. Do you own that yeah. game? I don't, and I am very excited to own it. It's going to be very exciting. I own it, and I've never played it, but I heard it's good. I heard like, it's a really good game. Much like 70% of um, my entire Steam library. Not 70, probably 40%. Uh, and we do not need to make a, um, we don't need to make a team. Oh, yeah, we don't need to make a team. All right, let's go, uh, let's go Wait, do Is there this. any benefit? If, like, if you, the only thing would be the global, right? Like, if you global uh, on a shared I don't, mob, no, because it's like the same thing. It's like the same thing. We'll, yeah. d we'll just go pound on these things. things. So we're right outside Fort Fury. Uh, if you want to join us, come join us. We'll be, cool. we'll be out here, uh, Killing shooting things. things. What not? Here's the first one. So what's oh. what's new in the technology world these days? What's what's recent news? What is? I don't. I my whole world's all cryptocurrency. I I should pay attention to other things, but I can't. Like cryptocurrency is a big one. Uh, it's been going up. We had a, we had a very uh, interesting event today in the in the crypto world. Yeah, all time uh, highs for Bitcoin and Ethereum, and then everything. Then it, it crashed hardcore and then went back up. So that, that was a fun little roller coaster this afternoon. And Bitcoin's up. Bitcoin's up since like 20 minutes ago or 10 minutes ago, which is good. When I bought things. It's, yeah, it's, it's, doing, it's doing good. Everything, everything's coming back. Everything's looking pretty good. Um, what's happened since the last time we did this? Oh, uh, Black Friday happened. Black Friday happened. Google Homes. I'm all about Oh, Google my Home. gosh. I... So I've never owned uh, an Amazon Echo product or a Google Home product or any of those. What, there's another one, isn't there? Oh, the Wait. Apple Home Kit, but that doesn't really count. That's not Wait, really the same Apple, thing. I didn't even know Apple had something. I don't pay attention to Apple. Well, they've got Siri, and it's I don't believe it's out yet, but they, they announced their... Siri speaker. Uh, Apple, yeah, their Siri speaker, the Apple Home Pod, the giant marshmallow. What does that thing cost? I think it's like five or six hundred dollars. It's like yeah, really like prohib. Apple. It sounds really expensive. I Apple think. I, I imagine the the audio quality has got to be pretty good, but I would hope so. It's I'm not spending that much money on anything speaker related. What's but I did get I did pick up not one but two Google Home Minis for Black Friday, and I am highly impressed. I. I've always wanted some sort of like one of those, uh, like an Echo or a Google Home type device. Same here. Um, and it is, it's everything I imagined it would be. I'm very excited. And now I am very tempted to go out and buy all of the smart home, home automation type products. Oh, I am nice. like, I am so tempted to go buy a smart thermostat just so I can use it with my voice. Yeah, and I have the Christmas lights on the outside of my house hooked up to my Google, to to a Wemo, so I can tell my Google Home, hey, turn the Christmas lights off. It's like okay, turning That's, the Christmas lights uh, off. It's so awesome. I did. I also picked up a Chromecast. I never had a Chromecast before. I normally so in the bedroom. I normally used uh, a, a oh my you old, ju you just started. A, you just got a Chrome. I didn't know. Yeah, I never had a Chromecast. It was on I sale. I have been a Chromecast at, believer for a long time. How do you like it? Oh. I mean, I, I totally believed in the Chromecast, but so in my I never owned one because in my bedroom I normally used uh, my old PlayStation Three, and because uh, I I had a uh, can you cast I had a media. That? No, or you but I, like... I had the I had the uh, the like the fancy media remote, like the remote for the oh, PlayStation Three, okay. so I didn't have to use a controller or anything like that. So it was really convenient. It, had, it has all the apps. It has Netflix. It has the Plex app. It's got all that stuff. So it was always just like, well, I already own this, so you know, there's no. No point in buying it. So, Google Home was on, or not Google Home. Wait um, a second. Why did it just say this loot is claimed by someone else? I I did, just realized did, that. It didn't say that for me. Well, that's because you got the loot. Don't tell me. Are that, these not shared? It's a good thing we don't get. We don't got these aren't 30, shared. 
These aren't shared loot. It's a good thing we don't have 30 people here. Why are these not shared loot? These were shared loot seven days ago. Because they changed something? Is there something in the client loader? I don't know. Alright, well, we should... Well, let's... I guess we should team up. I honestly... I was like... You know what would suck is if we like try to do a shared loot thing and then Mind Dark changes it before we do it. Is that let me Let's kill one more. Why why does this always happen? No, so there, there's an, there's an icon next to their name if it's yeah, shared loot. Yeah, that's true. And I don't think any of the, these have that. Yeah, no. these don't have that icon. Hang on. Okay, we'll make a team. If you want to come join us, come join the team. Yeah. What's max team in this game? It's 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 enough. Uh, twelve or I so. Can't but I, I can't. Man, that was fun. Like having shared loot. Every time, every time. I love. I'd love if I could hit a button and see where shared loot mobs are. It'd be really great if they made a map. Have you ever casted to the Xbox One? Because that's I like to do that a lot. It's nice. Uh, I mean, I, I have in the past. I don't normally because my TV has all of the apps built in. I normally just cast it. Oh yeah, smart TV man, Mr. Yeah. Fancy Pants over there. I don't see. That's why I never, that's why I have Chromecast because I don't own any smart TVs. Yeah, my TV in the bedroom is not a smart TV. So I got I got the Chromecast for that because it's on sale, and I highly enjoy using the Google Home. To control the Chromecast, it is to be able to say, "Hey Google, play Archer," and it just starts playing it. Or say, One of "What normally happens too is I'll be like falling asleep and I'll just be like, hey Google, turn off the TV,' and it turns the TV off." One of the first things. Wait, how does that work? How can it control the TV? It, it uses the HDMI, whatever they call it, the CEC. Basically, it's, it's like the controls over HDMI <laughs> stuff. That's right. So, I you know, you like, when like you turn on, like... Up with an Xbox. Yeah, so, like, certain certain devices, I think a lot of the consoles, like, PlayStation, like PlayStation 4 does it. Where you can turn your... If you turn on the PlayStation 4, it turns the TV on. You turn the PlayStation 4 off, it turns the TV off, that sort of thing. Apple TV does the same thing. A lot of devices do that. Um, and Google Chrome Classic Pass. So, you basically, yeah, you just tell it, hey... Turn the TV on, turn the TV off. The other day, when I first got the Google Home, uh, we I said, uh, I told it to, uh, I wanted it to play the, the, the audio track, the music uh, piece. Uh, I told it to play Dayman. Look who it is! Oh, hey, it's our old What's up, buddy? Yeah. We, guess hey, what? Hey. These, these aren't shared loot anymore. Yeah, they unshared looted it. Which is... We're Great. assuming he's hearing us. <laughs> just, just like talking to a. Um. Oh no, he's in the he's in the he's in the audio channel here. Oh, yeah. Was, if so, everyone, if you, I mean, if you wanted to do it and join us, you'd probably would be here. But if you just wanted to just watch and and participate in the uh, in the conversation, join our Discord. Hop in the voice channel. These aren't shared loot anymore, but we got a team, so it's all yeah, good. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. Invite them to the team. Oh yeah, yeah. Hang on. Let me. I need to do that. Team invite. Remind me before I go to bed tonight. I want to list my uh, apartment, so I have money. You can have Google Home remind you of that. That's true. I should say, "Hey Google, remind me in uh, an hour and a half. Remind me to list the apartment." You you st you I'm still I'm shooting. You're I was looking at my phone. Yeah, that's, that's not okay. Um, you good? Is everything good? I'm good. I'm good. I was looking at my phone. Okay. What well, uh? What were you saying, Chrome? Oh, um. Yeah, Chromecast, Google Home. Yeah, I I highly enjoyed the Google Chrome. They had it. Walmart had it for thirty dollars plus. A twenty-five dollar Walmart Google Express credit, so it ended up being five dollars. So it was so easy to set up. Like I, I, I just plugged it in, and then I don't remember. I think I opened up the Google Home app and like hit a button, and then one of the first things I tried was like, "Hey Google, I want to watch The Office" or something like that, and it was like, str it, like it was immediately. I didn't, I didn't hit anything with my Chromecast or anything. It was just automatically new because it. It just it was knows. Like streaming the office to 
bedroom uh, Chromecast or something. It was, it was awesome. It's fantastic. I, I'm a big fan. I, I'm bought into the Google home automation ecosystem. I want all of the things now. I, I saw that someone had, I think it was Amazon, had the Nest Thermostat E, which is like the slightly cheaper version, but does a lot of the same things. It was like 120 bucks, and I, I was really tempted to buy that. I didn't know like they had Like, really cheaper. tempted. Yeah, it's a little bit cheaper. It, it does a lot of the same things. It's got like a couple of things that... Like, it doesn't look quite as nice, although it does look cool. It's, like, all white, oh, and it's I got, like, saw, a little frosty screen. I, I, yeah. I didn't realize It's, that. like, plastic instead of metal, those sort of things, but it's it's very inexpensive. They also have, I saw, I was super, today I was looking this up, I saw on eBay they had a, a Honeywell Lyric T5 thermostat for, like, 60 bucks on eBay. Which is, it's it's a real basic smart thermostat, but it is compatible with Google Home. And I was I was very tempted for sixty some it was like sixty three dollars or something. I I don't I need to. Mm, I, need to I have a Wi-Fi enabled thermostat, but I don't have it set up to Google Home stuff. Yeah, you need to see like if I that's compatible. I think it is. Because I was it was the last night I was lying in bed, and it was a little bit warmer in the nighttime, and I I like you know, I like the bedroom nice and cool. And so I uh, I had to get up out of my bed right before I went to bed and turn the air conditioning on. There you go. But I thought, man, if I could just say, hey, Google, turn on the air conditioning, that would be have to move. amazing. I need, to, I need to put my other one in my bedroom. It's really great. Oh, you don't have it in your bedroom? I Where got your Chromecast it, I is? No, it's in my kitchen because we're in there more than my bedroom. Oh, yeah, you need to get one in your bedroom because then you can control it with the Chromecast. Or you can control Chromecast with it. Yeah, no, I have a second one. I just haven't opened it yet. Been so oh, you busy. haven't? Oh, man. So what's the deal? How does... Are shared loot mobs always just like an event type thing? It seems like it cycles around. I I don't know I, I I wish they would keep certain areas of mobs persistently shared loot. Oh, that would be awesome. Because it's I, I can understand why they don't all the time. Because if you've got a lot of people, and I guess it's not that much different than team. It it should be the the ratios of everything should stay the same because the loot itself doesn't change. Yeah, or it but, shouldn't change. But if you've got like 40 people shooting something and they're all like spread out it's possible that like none of them will even get hit by the thing before it dies so my dark isn't getting any like uh, yeah but so so the the ratio should should stay the same though if they if they have it set up correctly there should be like a a cost like a like a like a cost to kill so there should be like a for a certain mob there should be a relative... I mean, it's going to be different depending on the weapon well, you use and all that kind of that, stuff. But, but they should have an average cost to kill each mob. That is, And that number should not be dependent on the damage that the player takes. So that, that should be outside true. of yeah, armor decay. That would be, they should have an average number. And this is... This kind of, this kind of gets into, like, a, a lot of analytics and stuff, which I hope they're doing because... A, because most businesses do this. It's all sorts of analytics and, and business data type stuff. Uh, they should have. They should be able to tell you the average cost to kill a specific mob outside of armor decay. So it should be outside of what your player would take. And then you should set that to ba to like a to like point nine to one. That should be like your yeah. your payout per cost ratio. And so if they set that as the average to all those mobs, then it shouldn't matter about any, like it shouldn't matter if it's shared loot or not. That shouldn't affect their returns or the players' returns. I'd love to see all their data. Like I wonder how they I wonder like I'm really curious if they do any like big data type stuff. I, I'm pretty sure they do. I feel like they do that more than they do like 
creative game development. I would game. I would hope so, because that's that's it's something that especially in this day and age it's one it's super important, but it's also relatively easy to do. If you have yeah, the right I'm tools sure and the right got, people like, involved, I'm sure they've got it all. Like, because that's like, the because if you talk about when you get into like the business type stuff, that's like that's huge in business. I think that's something that the the level of detail that even smaller businesses can get to. I think it would surprise most people that aren't uh, involved in that type of stuff every day. Like. Um, like for I mean I'm I'm sure I'm sure you can have figured all this stuff out, but a lot of people probably don't realize this. Like if you go into like most even department stores or retail stores these days, you see on the outside or even on the inside it always is like, hey, free free guest Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi in our store. And I I imagine a lot of people look at that and go, oh that's neat, they're offering free Wi-Fi. I think I saw that at a, like a J.C. Penney or a Dillers or I think I saw it at Lowe's. Places like that, mm -hmm. and probably a lot of people think, "Oh, cool! Hey, free Wi-Fi! Yeah, that's that's neat. That's nice of them to provide that." That is not for you. That is not the that place of business is not offering that to be as a convenience for the customer. They are offering that because they want all the analytical data that goes along with that. That's not to say that they're spying on you, but what they're doing. And I know this because I've used a lot of similar type systems. What they're doing is they're tracking you through your through their store. And they're looking at they're pulling all sorts of data as to where like you walk you're, in the store. What you're searching? No, Wait, not so like, it's how do they it's know not where you're walking. No, 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 no. So it's okay, so it's what it's not tracking like your data usage or your web history. What they're doing is they're tracking you through the store. So based and upon like what access point you're connected to? Yeah, so basically you, you put your access points all throughout the building. And so basically a lot of these, if not all of these Wi-Fi systems can... Ooh, that was a decent loot. Um, they can do, uh, depending on how you have your system set up, you can get it where it's pretty accurate location data inside of your building. And so what they do is they track uh, where you go in the building, how long you spend in certain areas of the building so like and, and they can oh, they can aggregate all that sort of data so if they see okay you come in the front door and your first stop is you know if it, if you're at Lowe's your first stop is the lawn mowers and you spent 45 seconds looking at lawn mowers and then you turned around and walked out of the store and you didn't go by the registers or anything like that so they can see okay you came in you looked at lawn mowers and you didn't buy anything and so they take that and they multiply that by several people, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people, and they can get aggregate data of like, okay, you know, 15% of people came in to our store and didn't buy anything. Why did they not buy anything? Where did they go in the store? Why did they not buy stuff? I mean, they can do, they can track you as far as like the websites you visit to. So you can see like, like if they saw 50% of our customers on Saturday between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. came in, they looked at over by our lawnmowers, which we had on sale, they opened up Amazon, and they walked out and didn't buy anything. They can be like, okay, our sale's not working. They came in to look at it, and then they didn't buy it. So they, they can build that. like okay. all of these statistics and stuff. Like It can get like super deep and super detailed. It's it's really interesting stuff. It's I never I never thought of that. I didn't realize that that was. Oh crazy. yeah, they do all sorts of stuff. I remember reading or not reading. I was watching. It was some documentary, and this was a long time ago. This was probably ten or fifteen years ago. It was on Walmart, and I don't know what the documentary is about because it was a long time ago. But at one point in this, it was like a TV show type, type documentary type thing. They were in some uh, like Walmart like data center or like some sort of data analytical type office or something like that. And uh, they had a, they have a bunch of screens up on the wall and one of them, one of the screens up on the wall was weather data for the United States. And one of the host person or whoever it was, was asking the guy like, why do you have the weather up there? Like, why, why is that important to you? And they were telling him like, they've noticed that in certain areas when 
there are forecasted to be storms that sales of pop tarts go up. <laughs> And so they pay attention to the weather because when they see that, you know, uh, bad weather is going into a certain area, they ship extra Pop Tarts to those Walmart stores. That's so cool. In anticipation of that. And this they was have years all ago. That data. Like, they, they have yeah. all that data if they just, like, sift through it. And... Yep. And this was years ago. So oh, it's, it's much more prevalent now than it is then because it's a, it's a lot easier to get and to aggregate and to build uh, models based on that data. It's, it's super interesting stuff. Yeah, I always... Th and so that's why they have the free Wi-Fi. I always wish I could see all that information. It's like, it's really interesting stuff. And there's a lot of tools these days out there uh, that's affordable even and, and easy enough to set up, even for small businesses, where you can get all this data and just build charts. And, like, uh, if you're interested in, like, where people go in your store, you can build, uh, like, maps and have heat maps what? in your store. I died. So you can see, like, oh, mo like, like ninety percent of people that come into our store uh, spend the most amount of time in this aisle, or something like that. And it's like, okay, what aisle? Oh, it's the uh, it's the aisle with the water heaters, or it's the uh, it's the aisle with the pop tarts or whatever. So you can say, okay, ninety percent of our people on this day came into our store to buy pop tarts or whatever. And it's like, okay, well, and then you start you take that over like a, a longer time span, and you can start building. Um, you can start building models and aggregate data of like okay you can see you can see trends over certain times yeah. and then you can correlate that to other maybe there's like certain events that are going on so so like pop tarts and bad weather you can say okay you know why did pop why did sales of pop tarts spike 90% on this day it's like okay well was there bad weather was there whatever was there it was it a holiday weekend you know, an easy one is, you know, the the weekend before Thanksgiving, sales of turkey spiked. You know, that, that's an easy one to figure out, but... Wait, where are you guys? Uh, that's not good... Um, how do I work this thing? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post in the, in the sock chat. There's our there position. Is... Why? Post it in the team chat. Oh, there's a team chat. That's right. I forgot there was a... We were in a team. Um, yeah, I always, <clears throat> like, whenever I'm in, like, Burger King or McDonald's or, or Walmart, I always think about this stuff, because, like, if you're running a tiny mom-and-pop store, it's not worth your time <coughs> to go yeah, through that Yeah, if it's, if it's a really small, yeah. Statistically sig significant data, but, like, I always, like, it, it intrigues me to think about, like, the way... <clears throat> big businesses like that something that has like hundreds or thousands of stores <clears throat> makes oh yeah makes decisions because like they can look at so much data it's similar like that with websites too like facebook yeah yeah it's same same concept facebook like even like a mcdonald's even like a mcdonald's you think oh a mcdonald's isn't very big like why are they need to track so they they can see so one dude in their corporate headquarters can say okay all of the mcdonald's in the state of nebraska you know, they, they can run and they can get, like, averages of, like, how long do people stay in the store? How long, or how many people go to the play place? How crowded is the play place on a Saturday afternoon compared to, you know, a, a Thursday morning or something like that? They can they can run all these all these queries against this data and get, and get all sorts of information. They can see how many people were in the drive-thru, uh, all, all that type of stuff. It's it's really fascinating. And I know and like, they... Facebook like also I've heard like Facebook does some really I mean oh, like yeah. any 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 business is going to do some level of that. Bigger business is probably on a, on a bigger scale, but any business is going to do st some level of that or should be if they're not, they definitely should be because especially these days, it's it's very, it's a lot easier and a lot more inexpensive than it sounds like. There's a lot of tools, a lot of pieces of software available right now that makes it, yeah, a lot easier than you might I mean, think. Especially especially when you're dealing with websites like Google or whatever. Like that's the whole reason Google makes money is they understand, oh yeah, who, what their searchers, who their searchers are, what they're interested in, so they can throw ads. Same with Facebook. Oh, yeah. like, Facebook. Facebook's ad advertising platform is really 
great. Like, there's a lot of people making a lot of money on Shopify and like, um, other like other things doing like highly targeted stuff on Facebook because like yep. they know their their user base so well. Like Facebook knows like obviously simple things like age, date, like age, sex, stuff like that. But they know they know what they like, like literally what the things that they like things that yep. they like on Facebook and like pages they like on Facebook and oh yeah and they can cor- they can they can get other data from from other people so they can see like okay this person has gone to these websites they spend a lot of time shopping for shoes or something like that like they, there's there's all yeah. sorts of data like that there's, you can I mean, do that the, with something just like an email address like you give someone your email address and like they oh can, yeah they know oh this this guy's email address he signed up for these other things because you can buy lists or you can like link you can like compare lists with other lists and try to find like similar like people with similar interests and stuff oh yeah it's it's big so it's it's there's a term that the they call it it's called uh uh big data yeah and in in the technology world that it's kind of a buzzword but it's it's really true i mean it's it's the there's a whole industry based around big data analytics uh it's also called uh, a lot of a lot of it can be called uh, business intelligence is a big part of it did you know that google if you do not give google your age it will guess it and you can look into the settings and see what how old it thinks you are based upon your search queries really that would just yeah. be fun to do it's uh it's not always right i remember this one guy was like saying it was totally off but like Oh, so it probably instance, thinks like, I'm like 60 years old. Like if you're googling like Monster Energy and Taylor Swift and you know what I mean, like it's gonna be like okay, so you're like yeah, 16 to 22 or whatever. Like, and yeah, I, I remember someone telling me that, and I looked it up, and it was yeah, it tell like you can change it too. Like it'll guess. It, I am I, I'm, I'm fairly certain it would guess that I'm like 65 years old. What do you Google like tobacco pipes and like? Yeah, oh. tobacco pipes and lawn mowers and yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That's yeah. It's crazy how valuable just having that information, just knowing this individual is this age and is interested in these things. Like that's so valuable. Like, that's why. Google oh makes, yeah, that's it's it's on. crazy. It's crazy how much businesses want that type of information. Like even like businesses you wouldn't even think about. Like most retail stores, like you wouldn't think that they would, they would care about that type of stuff. But it's like, and and, and it's like, and then every then you can sell it to like every retail store. Like it's it's crazy the amount of data and analytics people do on stuff. It makes and me that's why to make money with. That's why Google and a lot of these other companies they can give away all these services and stuff for free. These really high quality services they can give away for free. Yeah, like Gmail. Yeah, exactly. I've I've never read the Gmail terms of service, but oh, well, there's laws against like, do can I don't even know. Can Google scrape your Google can't scrape your emails for info, can it? Oh, it does. It totally does. Okay. Have you not gotten an email like uh, flight information? Like, just got an email, and then like a few days later, it, it, like some notification pops up on your phone, like, "Hey, you should leave for the airport right now." Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it totally does that. I and I am I don't know this for one hundred percent sure, but I am convinced it also does your text messages if you have yeah. an Android phone, because and I say this and this actually happened to I talked to someone this happened to them as well. You sound like a is, conspiracy theorist now, but I believe it. Nah, let, let, let me finish. Let me finish. So I was uh, I was texting someone, and I I I said something like uh, I'm oh I'm about to go out and forage for food or something like that. I was like I was going to go to the grocery store, uh, but I used the word forage. <coughs> I'm also signed up for the Google like survey things where they give you Google credit. Yeah. Google like Play Store credit for like just quick surveys and stuff. Google and, opinion rewards. Is the name. Yeah, Google opinion rewards, and I think it was like the next day. One of the normally it's like which of these places have you visited recently? And it's like normally it takes like your location history and you pick what to play and then you give a review and all that kind of stuff. But this one was the question was have you foraged for truffles recently? <laughs> which one is a really odd question. 
But it used the same word, forage. And I thought that is more than a coincidence. Now, I was talking to someone not long ago. They said that happened to this, they, they did the same thing. They texted someone, used the word forage, and like the next day, they got a Google survey asking them if they had forage for truffles. What would be the, um, like, what do you think the point of that would be? That's that's such a bizarre I don't know, question. because I, I don't think many people actually go foraging for truffles. But what I imagine is there's some truffle foraging company that wants that data. Or somebody is interested in that. But, so, I say all that to say, uh, they definitely scrape all your text messages. And, and look for information there. Yeah, and, <clears throat> and what they say is the reason, and I'm not even saying this, I disagree, it's like, they can give you more relevant ads, so it's like... If I'm going to get ads, they might as well be relevant oh, to yeah. things I care See, about. See, I, I have no problem with Google or any of these companies pulling all, all these sorts of in, all sorts of information and then like giving me ads or suggesting services or, or doing surveys and stuff. As long as they don't give that information government. as long as the information they collect is only used for that purpose. Yeah. If yeah, yeah, that's a good. I, like, I don't know if there's like laws or anything designed around that, but if if there isn't, I would say I would I would be in favor of that, of saying, you know, if if Google wants to take all this information, collect all this information, they can even sell it to other companies. But as long as that information is only used for the things they say it's going to be used for, and those things are very clearly stated, you know, serving relevant ads, product suggestions making the experience better, that sort of thing. I, I am okay with that. Yeah, it's, it's when they start, you know, selling it to the government, and the government starts collecting all that data because the government is not going to sell me And then the government's ads. like, hey, we saw you were talking about trying to get out of capital gains tax with your cryptocurrency. Uh, yeah, exactly. Gains. It's like that. That's where it's like, okay. But, uh, okay, fine. You can totally do it. You sell all my information to the government with the condition that is very clear, clearly stated up front. Like, as long as you fully disclose, in plain English, what you're doing with all that data you're collecting about me, That's the thing. no it problem. Could, it could be decently disclosed, but I've never read the Terms of Service or Gmail. I mean, I'm sure someone has. No, so like, and usually Terms of Service and all that stuff is, is very, it's it's very Jargon. hard to parse yeah. and it takes a long time to read. So if, if someone were to propose a law or a piece of legislation that says it, you, if you're if you collect this sort of information on people, you have to clearly disclose in plain English what you're doing with it, and uh, what you might do with it in the future. So it's like if I sign up for a Google account, it says, "Hey, we're Google. We're going to collect your information. We're going to use it. We're going to sell it to advertisers. We're going to sell it to. We're going to use it to make your experience better and serve up relevant ads." I'm like, "Okay, cool, cool." If there's a line that says, "I'm going to sell it to the government," or "We're going to give it to the government," you know. As long as you're aware that that's what they're doing with your information, I'm have at it. That's that's the point where I check out, where I'm like, okay, no, I'm not, no, I, will. I don't want that. Well, that's the thing. Even if the the sad thing is, even if the terms of service don't necessarily say, hey, we're gonna give you government information, that doesn't mean the government isn't gonna come and get it anyway by force. Like what happened with I don't did you see with Coinbase, the big the the big uh. uh what happened uh, with Coinbase? The Coinbase has been fighting with the um, the uh, IRS about... The IRS wants Coinbase to divulge uh, personal information about their users. Um, they yeah, said, that, I mean, that, that's a little bit different, though. That's, yeah. Yeah. They, they want to collect tax money. Yeah. Which is... Which... Is different than the NSA, the like someone like the NSA collecting a bunch of aggregate data on people's behaviors and activities. But I, yeah, that, that's still equally as I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah. They 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 found some other avenue to tax people. A very good avenue. This is a lot of people yeah. made a lot of money in crypto that they want that. I I think I mean they I mean it's pretty obvious. I mean they. They saw people are they they found a, a new, but a, a new avenue that is similar to, you know, stocks or any sort of other investment. What's so that? They, Tal they saw an opportunity. Tal Talzoid, 
Uh, loot's, uh, loot's, uh, it's alright. <laughs> we had a couple decent ones, but so far, nothing. It's exciting. about what you expect. Although, the thefts are not, um, shared loot, which was a surprise, but we're gonna that was, yeah, it was all good. Very disappointing. But we'll see what we can do here. Oh crap. You get him? Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I, I killed him good. That's good. No, nope. <laughs> make making sure. Make sure he's dead. What were we talking about? How did we get started on all that business? Uh, oh, Google, Google Home, Home and Google yeah, Home. Google and yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I like my Google Home. I'm a big fan, especially for five dollars. You didn't get any TVs or anything on Black Friday, did you? Talzoid, I just made you a mod, so don't do not do anything crazy, but you're a <laughs> mod. You're allowed to be a mod, because you're in our Discord. Chris, you can be a mod, too. I'm giving out <laughs> mods like crazy right now. You don't even know. <laughs> So you can ban people. If, if someone yeah, just... D don't ban me, though. Don't I would ban appreciate me. I don't it. think he could... Oh, actually, he could ban you. Wait, do you have, like, a Twitch account that isn't... No, I don't, uh, I don't think so. Look at that sweet sword you got. He's got the... He's got the green sword. Oh, wow. Icon. He's got the... he got the sword icon going on. The sword is very important. Oh, yeah. It's a sign of respect and honor in the Twitch world. <laughs> is it? It is. The green sword it is like... You don't mess with the green sword. You, you, you yeah. piss the green sword off and you're gonna get... You're gonna get permabanned. Yeah, no, that's... Actually, you, I don't you even don't know. want that. I don't even you know. Don't I've that. never been a mod. I've ne Like in someone else's thing, so I don't know. Can you permaban people? We'll see. I don't... I mean, I think it's just called a ban. I mean, you can do permaban, you can do like... You can do like... There's time frame bans in Twitch, too. Like, if someone's yeah. obnoxious, you can be like, all right, I'm banning you for five minutes, shut up, and if you're like that more, I'm going to ban you further. Yeah. Twitch, Twitch has got a lot of people that, that need that type of uh, parental. Yeah, there's a lot of kids on there. I'm dying. So far, Talzoid is going to win uh, Terraria, because he's the only person that's chatted. Uh, well, we haven't done it yet, but when it, once we do it, um, I think if as long as it works, it should be set up that anyone who's talked the last five minutes wants to hit the roll button, it'll it'll pick someone randomly. So what else did you get for Black Friday? What did I get for Black Friday? A bunch of toys and uh, and. Uh, Matt wants to play Destiny. Oh yeah, we all got Destiny too. Yeah, Destiny. Which we two. should we should stream that. We should stream that next time we play. Yeah, we've been playing Destiny two a lot lately. That's that's a fun it's a fun game. It has it definitely has some. I don't know. Like yeah. The way the way that Bungie did things is not optimal, but it's it's definitely it, it fulfills it, it it scratches an itch. That yeah, I would definitely say so. My my review of Destiny is. Uh, I'm dis I'm disappointed in it. Uh, uh, as a sequel, it but it's still a really fun game and I still really enjoy it. Being a sequel to the first Destiny, I expected it to be to be more. But it is it is still fun, so I enjoy it. I mean the 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 core gameplay, the core gunplay is is good. Very good. Oh yeah, game mechanics, and they, they had that nailed in the first Destiny. Game mechanics are fantastic. Bungie's always been fantastic at that. Um, it's all the as it 
for being a sequel to the first Destiny, it's it's not as improved as I would have preferred. Especially the the so in Destiny uh, they call it the Crucible, which is like your normal like deathmatch type multiplayer. I I expected much more of that. I expect that to me because the first Destiny it was kind of eh, it was okay, but it was this really big shared world. Uh, FPS with like a lot of MMO type elements and stuff. So I was like, okay, that type, that part of the multiplayer was kind of maybe not given as much attention. I can understand the rest of the game is huge, a huge undertaking. Okay, fine. Destiny 2, it's kind of the same deal. So it was kind of like, I, I expect it to be from, from the company that made the definitive first person shooter console multiplayer experience. Yeah, that, that is they, messed up. Yeah. They define that for the all of forever. I expected more from the uh, like the deathmatch por uh, portion of the the multiplayer there. More game types, more maps, a, a bigger, a better refined system there, that sort of thing. And then yeah, the multiplayer in Destiny Two is like you can't even pick between like um, game modes. You can't even pick between like. Deathmatch and like objective games. It's just yeah. It's, it's very there, there's not even there's not even like uh like your your playlist like you normally get with uh those type of games. Like you pick like okay, pick a random map and like between three different game types, but keep it capture the flag. You know that sort of thing. I want to know what it's, like the the mindset was behind that. Like they they make millions, tens, maybe hundreds. I don't know how much many millions. But they make a lot of money. They got a lot of intelligent people on their team. I want to know why they they do stuff like that. Why? I would I would guess their their thought a... process is that that's not the type of game Destiny is. Yeah, it's but more like, you of a. Still, if you're gonna play multiplayer, you should be able to. Why not let people pick like what they're doing with their yeah. time? Yeah. I I that that part especially I was very disappointed just because it it's it's Bungie. This is this is what they are best at, and. Uh, they didn't do it. Um, the campaign missions and stuff, like the story mode, is well. I have a theory. A little bit lackluster. I have a theory. I mean, um, well, also Bungie doesn't. The Bungie of today is not the Bungie that made Halo. I don't think. I don't. Even, didn't 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 Lance say that like the entire team is different than? Like, yeah, a lot of people my, stayed my behind. My theory and... is that like when they got Halo One really right with the multiplayer, it was a complete accident. Because they didn't have, obviously, when they did Halo 1, they didn't have as much money, they didn't have as, as big a team as Halo 2. And then when they made Halo 2, in my opinion, by almost any measurable way, other than the fact that it had online multiplayer, and it did a, some really awesome stuff when it comes to, like, online voice chat, matchmaking, all that stuff. As far as the core multiplayer gameplay, they Halo 2 was horrific as far as, like competitive multiplayer shooters go like i just, i think as, I, so i don't think they is, knew what they were doing to begin with and i think they got lucky with halo one and then they were like i think yeah. i i would agree they got they got lucky in a lot of ways with halo one i think with halo two um uh they got a f uh, what was i gonna say they got a yeah what were they, got, they got they got a few things wrong with the halo two multiplayer but looking at it from from the perspective of today and looking back into history, I think it was it was still it was the core gameplay part of it. I think they got right, though it was very different from Halo One. No. So back I then, I it, it was. I'm not they, done yet. They had I'm you spawning with an SMG on Blood Gulch. It yeah. So they 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 the got a few like, things wrong. They got a few things wrong, and. Uh, especially as time went on with Halo 2, they, they fixed some of that stuff. But looking at it from the from through the lens of history, okay. Um, because at the time I was very disappointed with the Halo 2 multiplayer, because the main thing is because it was very different from Halo 1, and I expected something similar, but kind of maybe slightly revamped compared to Halo 1. So it was very different. They got a few things wrong, but I think the core gameplay part of it. Was very very good. Map design was very good. I'll take uh, the way the web compared to almost any modern warfare game out there right now. Oh yeah, the the weapons were the, the all the mechanics 
were, were very, very well done. There was a few things they got wrong. So, for example, like your example of spawning with SMGs Which they on Blood Gulch. Much. They did fix that. Uh, I remembered, I think it was like a month, maybe two months after the game released, they issued an update that fixed, that changed a lot of the mechanics. There was a lot of stuff that was very, very different in the early days of Halo 2 that they changed. Um, How does something like that get to... How does that get printed, though? Like, how does no one... Did no one on the Bungie team, like... I don't know. Like, did no one play Halo before they released it on multiplayer? Like, did no one play multiplayer? Did, did they not realize, like, oh, like, I'm spawning with a short-range weapon, and it's pretty much the first one of the sniper rifle wins, and it has nothing to do with aiming skill. I, I, yeah, I don't. That that was that was pretty that was pretty dumb. I I, I completely agree. That there was there was several things that they they got wrong. Some of the things they fixed. Some of the things were still wrong. Some of the things that they got wrong persisted in the future Halo games. Um, one of the things they fixed. So in Halo Two, you know, the, <coughs> it was it was referred to as the noob combo. If you don't know what the noob combo is, it's the you take the plasma pistol, you charge it up, you shoot it at someone. And this plasma round basically, like, heat-seeking homes in on the bad guy, where it's really hard to dodge, and it takes your shield down immediately. You, you then switch from the plasma pistol to the battle rifle, one shot, and they're dead. So it was, it, was a, it was a very overpowered type of a move you could do. That they never fixed. That was really dumb. Um... They did fix it for later Halo games. What was my point in all of this? What was I talking about? You something were about to say Destiny. Halo Two was good or something. It was. It was. I don't know what you're saying. Definitely was... at the time, it was. It was. It was revolutionary for a couple reasons at the time. What was I going to talk about? I was going to correlate this Destiny somehow. Let's bring it back around. It was something about. This is the company that defined. Console first-person shooter experiences. Yeah, definitely. Like, more so, I would say more so, in terms of impact, than Rare did with GoldenEye. Like, everyone talks about, like, GoldenEye being one of the best games ever made. Absolutely agree. In terms of impact, Bungie did more for the first-person shooter console experience. Just because, I mean, if, if, if anyone questions that, how many GoldenEye sequels were there? Well, the basic How many thing people wrong was they revamped the graphics engine because what they initially wanted to use was not compatible with the Xbox. Is that true? I didn't know. I didn't Wait, know of I, what? Uh, of Destiny? No, I think uh, probably uh, Halo 2, I think. is. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. They did. There, there was a lot of... I don't know. Going off on a slight tangent, I remember getting an Electronic Gaming Monthly magazine... Um, that the entire uh, that had a huge write up on Halo Two, and it had all this stuff that that, that they were yeah he's talking about Halo Two, um, that Bungie was planning on doing with Halo Two that didn't end up happening like running and vehicles and or oh my gosh wheelers. if you they were gonna have four wheelers I had a bunch of plans they ended up doing what if some of that had to do with if like, the, if uh, you I remember so to give some context and this is from my perspective here, Halo was one of the most fun games I've ever played. And as soon as I heard about a Halo 2 coming out, I was hyped AF, like more so than ever for seen. anything of ever again. More so than any movie, more so than any other video game. Oh, I was pumped. This was midnight. They were handing out donuts at GameStop. So th this was, I was super, super, super excited for this, like, like beyond imagination. Uh, and I remember watching, I think it was at E3, they did like an E3 demo thing where it was part of the campaign where they go through like the city and everything and they showed a lot of stuff in that demo that they didn't really put in the final game of uh, melee combos which still to this day they still don't have melee combos which okay like maybe maybe they is uh, the more they played with it the more they realized okay this is really working out maybe we shouldn't really include the game whatever but they showed part of that campaign mission that it was it was not that campaign mission in the final game and that was, I think that was part of my disappointment <coughs> with Halo 2, was that I, I was hyped for this more than anything of ever. I was hyped AF, well, because yeah, this, was the, this was the sequel to, the, the, like, 
one of my most favorite games of all time. And this was getting a sequel with online multiplayer, which we couldn't really do before. Xbox Live, anyway. And it was it was it was very different from the first Halo. So it was it was initially a bit disappointing, especially with the multiplayer. I I expected it to be very similar to the first Halo because I had been playing the first Halo for like three years at that point. So I was like, I I felt like all all my skills that I gathered over the years would transfer over, and then the, the, it, they kind of changed a bunch of stuff around. But but. What was I? My point earlier, anyway, was that looking back through the lens of history, mm -hmm. uh, Halo, Halo Two, I think, was actually was much better than than we thought back in the day. Like going back and and playing it, it's it, it's it absolutely has its flaws. It absolutely has things that they needed to change and things they never should have done. But I think it I think it ended up being better. Than we thought, just because it was, it was, it was much different than, than the first Halo. It was a lot different than I was expecting it to be. I don't have my amp on. No, that's not good. What's that all about? Yeah, I, I think I would agree to that. Now Halo hey, Three, the on the E3 other hand, the E3 demo was complete. Uh, Halo Three, God. Uh, yeah, the E3 demo is completely scrapped, and that's due to the engines they started with. Okay. Yeah. So, that, so they were building on an engine that just didn't work on the Xbox. Yeah, I remember reading about the Halo 2, like the development and all that kind of stuff. Basically, it was like super rushed, and they couldn't get all the stuff done they wanted to, and... And I'm sure... I can understand. Like, I, I can't imagine how hard game design is. Like, I... Oh, yeah. But really, okay, so... As far as the campaign goes, it, the the story itself definitely felt super rushed. But one of my biggest beefs, and I don't think anyone else, at least that I've talked to, has has had the same beef with it. One of my biggest beefs with the Halo 2 campaign was that you never had any ammo. Yeah. The SMGs, I think the SMG had like a, you could hold 180 rounds. So you pick up... You start with your SMG, your battle rifles and stuff. You shoot a few bad guys. You're out of ammo. The whole game you're using Covenant weapons, which I hate. And it's like why? Because in Halo One, you had your assault rifle that holds 600 rounds. Halo Two, it was 180. So hey, for you know multiplayer, how many rounds okay, the fine. Guns hold but in Halo? that's so nerdy. Yeah. Because that's how upset I was about it. You could the whole game you're using stupid covenant weapons when I want to be using SMGs and battle rifles, all this stuff, and it, you, you were always running out of ammo. And to me, that's such a simple thing to change. That's a freaking number. Just change the number in the code. But you're always out of ammo, and it was it was it was very frustrating for me. I, I did not I did not like it. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Yeah, it was it was very it was very upsetting, very upsetting. But oh yeah, and you play as the arbiter too. That was stupid. <laughs> Don't even get me started on that. The arbiter. Yeah, remember you played as the arbiter in Halo Two? Yeah, I remember that. I don't think I hated that, that was that much. I think it, I mean it, it was kind of just like, hey, let's throw this. Oh, here. I I hated that. I hated the I hated the whole covenant backstory part of it. Dude, I don't uh, remember the story of Halo Two at all. It, well, it was kind of convoluted. So that I probably surprise beat me. that game one time, and it was like I don't even want to know how many years ago was that. Two thousand four is when it came out. Oh, yeah. A while, like thirteen years. But it was. Uh, because I was, I was all into, like, the Halo books. Oh, uh, cool. Like, the whole Halo backstory, the whole first game. Like, I understood all the backstory and stuff. And when you read the books, the, the books don't really go much into the Covenant backstory. Basically, you, the whole lore up until that point was, like, the Covenant are these super bad guys. And you don't know much about them, which added to the mystery. And then you just wanted to shoot them all. You, 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 you were in, you were in the war, and you just all you cared about was defeating the bad guys. And then Halo Two goes into like all this thing where it makes you care about the bad guys, and it's like, no, I, 
I want to kill this guy. I don't want to play as him. He needs to die, not be a character. It was stupid. I don't. I don't even remember. What was the, was the whole point of that? Because like they wanted to kill the flood or something. Was well, so it was. It was them? setting up the storyline where the the Covenant elites partnered with the humans to take down everyone else, and it's a it's a classic cliche story of. They are my mortal enemy, and then at some point we become friends to defeat the one little enemy that's still kind of left there. It's it happens every it, it, uh, no. Yeah. It's tropey. Yeah, because because Halo, especially up until that point, it was very much it, the Covenant were very mysterious, it, and that's what adds to the excitement and the and all that part especially in the scariness of the of the game too. So if you ever if you ever look at horror movies, the scariest horror movies are ooh, that was a good loot. Are the ones where oh, wow, yeah. they show very little of the bad guy. You know very little about it cuz it cuz then your mind goes in and it fills all the gaps with the scariest thing your mind could think of. Yeah, yeah. And so it's kind of the same way with Covenant. Covenant very you, you learn very little about them, so they're very mysterious, and so you kind of just, your mind fills the gaps of all the mystery with the most mysterious thing your mind can think of. All that to say, I hated playing as the Arbiter. It was stupid. The stupid part did, of that game. I don't, did he, did he have a sword, or I don't, I have not played Halo 2 in forever. I mean, the, the campaign, even. even yeah, there were, there were swords involved, and stupid covenant weapons, and we definitely need to do. We need to play through all the Halo games again. Oh yeah, we should do. I mean, we got Master Chief Collection. We should. Yeah, we should do that. We should also do what we plan on doing when we buy Halo Five. Is like do a play it playthrough from start to finish. Stream. Yeah. I I'm interested to see what the Halo Five campaign is because Halo One was fantastic. Halo Two was a disappointment. Halo Three was a major disappointment. But I absolutely loved Halo 4. I thought Halo 4 was fantastic. It was a fan, it was a fantastic redemption. Well, it also that one wasn't. That one wasn't that the first 343 Halo. Yeah, which I was surprised because I thought, okay, they're gonna screw this up. But I actually I thought it was fantastic. I thought they did a really good job. And so I'm really interested to see what they did with Halo 5. Multiplayer, not impressed with. But we'll see what they do with the campaign. I uh, remember getting Halo Three at midnight, and then we played it, and like we beat it. Oh my god! We beat it before the sun came up. We're like, oh. we played through the whole campaign, start to finish, in one sitting, and the 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 epic grand finale of the campaign was anything but epic. It was. It was. I went to bed that morning. Pissed. I remember like all the uh, trailers I had for that made it seem so epic, and they were like talking about like this amazing battle. There's like some video of some like old war. Oh my gosh! Yeah, about. like all like we had Halo One, absolutely fantastic, epic, first of its kind. We had Halo Two, first time doing it on Xbox Live. The campaign was disappointing. It was rushed. Okay, cool. We're doing a Halo Three. We're gonna get it right this time. So it was like Halo Three. Okay. This time, we're going to get it right. We had a little hiccup with Halo 2. It was a little disappointing. We're going to take everything we learned from our mistakes there, and we're going to make a really epic Halo 3. This is this is the conclusion, the finale to the Halo storyline. So this is going to be good. All of the marketing material was like... Was... I can't... It's... It's hard to explain the detail with words, but it was, it was, it was fantastic, and it was epic. They had like... They had like a these old guys, kind of like these old Covenant War uh, vets, kind of like talking about like telling like war stories of the epic uh, final clash between the humans and the Covenant. So they were they were talking it like as a uh, they were talking it from the perspective of like the war is over now. Here's what the epic uh, final battle was like between the humans and the Covenant. That sort of stuff. And they had all these, like, uh, they had, you know, in the, in the commercials, it was all live action stuff, so they had, like, these guys walking around. They kind of looked like it was supposed to be, like, in a museum or something. Mm -hmm. And they had, like, this big that. display, like, this big model was built of, like, the final, of, like, the, the final human covenant, like, battle. 
And so they had, like, the old, like, war vet, like, walking around the model that they built in this, like, museum-type setting, talking about what it was like to be there. So you had, you had this, like, you had this idea of, like, this thing, and, and the tagline for Halo 3 was, finish the fight. So you had at least I, I that. had this. I remember that. It was like I'm gonna do it. I'm a I'm a finish. Yeah, it. it's like this is this is it. This is the final battle. This is the final stand between the humans and the covenant. We've been playing all these years. I've been reading all these books. This is it. This is the finale. This is gonna be a maze balls. Like this is this is it. This is the last time this is gonna happen. Like this is this is gonna be amazing. And so I expected this epic finale to this huge story. This epic final battle. Between the humans and the covenant, because this was we were going to finish the fight. After this, the fight would be finished. There would be no more fight after this because it would be finished. And uh, there was no epic battle. The end of the game was driving a warthog. Yep, down a big long thing. Yo, down, what's up, down Marvin? A thing. How's it going? And Tal's always said I gave up on the Halo series after three, so I never seen anything. I would recommend, oh, especially since man. you can pick it up for nothing these days. I would recommend checking out four. If anything, hey, the, I was the very scenes, impressed with Halo Four. I, I the cutscenes in that game are amazing, and the game the graphics just, are really fantastic, especially considering it was an Xbox 360 game. As someone who hated Halo Three, was incredibly disappointed. I would say I hated Halo that, Three that you so check much. Check out four if you. I, w- I was I was very very impressed with Halo Four. Now it is a little bit different because they're kind of they kind of started like a new story arc, so there's there's not much emphasis on like a human covenant war or anything like that. But they do introduce some new bad guys, so it's a little bit different. I'm but out of I am, uh, am. I'm out of I, I'm, uh, ammo for my Bravo, so I can't tag stuff. By the way, did you convert your uh, universal ammo no, or no, your uh, your shrapnel? No. You probably got a bunch of that. But yeah, Halo 4, I, I, I was that. very I impressed with that. Game anymore. You right-click on shrapnel and hit convert to ammo. Uh, wait, I have universal ammo. But... <coughs> no, don't shoot. Yeah, so, Stop shooting. My, my avatars. Oh. Convert to ammo. Stop shooting! Okay. You okay? I'm. I'm. Uh, had a lot of whiskey, mm. and I lost my stuff. I hate. I hate the. Um, have I ever mentioned how much I hate the how tiny the inventory system is on this? Oh my gosh, it's the worst. Where'd my shrapnel go? Somebody help me. It's under. I, I think I can. The little. It. I'm good. It's click on the icon. It looks no, like a jar no, of Vaseline. Shut up. Shut up. Okay. All right. Stop talking. You got it. The jar All right. Of All right. Yeah. So we'll we'll see how Halo Five is. One of these days. I don't have any. I don't. No, uh, just to, I don't. I don't have a whole lot of like. I'm not super excited about almost any AAA game these days. There and, aren't many that I'm excited about. And I don't want to sound like some kind of like hipster indie game only guy because I'm not that. But man, like games these days are just they're so like neutered. But that's like a the, there are there are very few I actually right. get excited about. Um, and it's for many years now. Like even ten years ago, like there weren't many I was super excited about. Um, I was super excited for Mirror's Edge when it first came out. Uh, definitely not disappointed with that one. I was very excited with that. Recently, uh, especially from this last E3, very excited about Anthem. However, it is being published by EA. So, I was very, very excited when I saw the trailer. Shortly after that, or at least these days, with EA's business going on, I am slightly less excited. So, business is a good word for that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with a business or making money, but... Oh, no, absolutely not. I, I've intentionally not bought an EA game, and, it's a, and I don't remember. As long as I can remember. Like, I, I, uh, I was kind of excited for Mass Effect Andromeda... Until I saw the reviews, and then I got very unexcited. Wait, and I didn't... Just, what were the reviews? Did that not do well? Because Mass Effect is awesome. No, apparently it was pretty mediocre. Oh. Which doesn't surprise me, because you don't you, you don't hear about it. And it came out, and then it quickly... No one ever talked about it. Yeah, it's like on sale on Black Friday for like 25 bucks. Yeah. Month. Same thing with Need for Speed games. Oh, I stopped paying attention. N Need for Speed I used to be a real big fan of, and then they just kept releasing them every year, and... They just kind of suck. Same thing happened with Call of Duty. Used to love Call of Duty. Then they kept releasing them every year. And they just turned into mediocre mush. With really bad map design. The map design just got so bad. Call of Duty Modern Warfare... Or Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. And Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Mm, both so absolutely fantastic. It's a great example. Those, Modern Warfare 3 were, and Halo 3 were both... Games that we both got on launch and were horrifically disappointed yep. and pretty much didn't play after. Yeah, because I loved me some Call of Duty 4. It was probably one of the first games I got really, really excited for besides Halo up until that point. Modern Warfare 2 came out. Super excited. Absolutely fantastic game. Got into the top 17 worldwide on PlayStation 3. I was ranked number really? like 17, something like that. Yeah, for It was the kill to death ratio, I think, which is what matters, kids. Um, then Call of Duty Black Ops came out, disappointed. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 came out, thought, okay, this is going to be it. Modern Warfare 1 was fantastic, Modern Warfare 2 is fantastic, this one's going to be fantastic. Crazy disappointed. So disappointed. Uh, do we like Black Ops 1 and 2? I, I honestly, I never no. played Black Ops. I, I like the zombie in Black Ops. Uh, yeah, that was kind of fun. I was I didn't care for Black Ops One. Um, I think I played for the demo for. for Steve no, I rented Black Ops too. For me and Steve, but way more for Steve. And I think this is a very good point. Um, a lot of the game comes down to map design and simplicity of map design. So like yeah, for instance. So if, yeah, Modern so Warfare for Call One of Duty, and Two had I never played Halo, campaign. Halo or Counter Strike style maps where it's like they're they're simple. simple they're very simple which means it's about skill it's not about getting randomly shot from some kind of window from you know what i mean so that modern warfare the 3 worst. started these and i've seen i've seen like these like i don't, I don't know what you call I, them, i've heard meme. them talk about it but like i've there's there's a very distinct difference between modern warfare 2 and modern warfare, modern warfare 3 with the map design it went from a simple map to a highly complex map that looked cool but it was so messy it was so like there were so many different like points that you could get shot from that it pulled the skill out of it which i can understand why they did it from a business standpoint because you can suck at the game and just walk around the corner and with a game like modern warfare where you kill the person really quickly like you don't have to be good to get kills in that game if you can just camp somewhere or sit yep. somewhere and with a good vantage point so yeah when it comes to yeah, sorry. What were you and I, I, I watched, I watched uh, videos and stuff where they talked about this. Where basically they, their intention was to minim, with the map design was to minimize uh, choke points in the map, which, which is not what you okay, should do. But yeah, that's I not. I don't. Yeah, definitely. So, so their solution to minimizing choke points was to make all like the all these paths and things, and so basically there's no like one area where you'll congregate. Like it's. It's there's really no, complex. There's not those and awesome hot zones like in CS Italy where you like you run in and you've got like that hallway. Yeah. And like you go around the corner and it's like whoever you go around the corner and whoever's better at aiming wins. Like that's yep. that's what a competitor. Because you can anticipate like who's gonna be on the other side and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so you end up and this this is my same beef with uh, battlefield games. Is it's nearly you you can't you you walk into an area and there are, you know, 30 different points that you could get shot from. And you can't check all those areas before... Like, there's not enough time to check all those areas before moving on before you get shot. You're, you're doing your thing, you're minding your own business. Next thing you know, some dude sitting in a bush just shoots you and you're dead. I very much prefer games and map design where 
So, to give you an example of kind of how I play, like, Halo and all this kind of stuff, you want to make sure, you always want to make sure you're Steve-O is a level 50 in Halo, by the way, so he knows. I've been, pl I've been playing Halo for 16 years, son. <laughs> so, normally, so how I play is you always want your back to the wall because you want to minimize the number of angles that someone could potentially shoot you from. Like, that's like, I imagine that's like game playing 101. You want to make sure the number of locations that someone could fire you fire at you from is minimized as much as possible, meaning you want to make sure you have, you know, if you if there's something to your left, you can use as cover. You want to make sure you keep that to your left. If there's a wall behind you, you want to make sure you want to make if if there's if you can keep it where only the things directly in front of you are the things that you could get shot from, that's ideal. Without camping cuz camping is stupid. Hey, what were we talking about? Modern Warfare 3. You is, know what's dumb is everyone Sorry, what? Like everyone yeah, so they took all that campers. stuff away. They said you can get shot from anywhere for any reason at any time. Ruined everything. I remember, yeah, I I, I want to find that thing. It was like this little joke, but serious. It was like Modern Warfare Two versus Modern Warfare Three maps, and it pretty much showed like exactly what you're explaining. It was like Modern Warfare Two was like a simple map with like four hot zones and like. No more than one or two places you can get shot from at any point, and Modern Warfare Three was like this just complete mess with like lasers, yeah. uh, like lines everywhere showing where you can get murdered from. I My mean, it makes sense. Broke. Like, Modern Warfare Three, all those games, they they throw this ridiculous map with tons of like places you can get shot by, and then power weapons and. Yeah, you can that, that like, was that was my beef too with Call of Duty. Is it it devolved into like this huge mess of like power ups and weapon drops and uh, kill streak rewards and just keep it simple, y'all. Look at okay, think of in your in your opinion in your mind, what is the most timeless multiplayer first person shooter out there? Like which one has stood the test of time after all these years? I mean that's kind of subjective, but I would say Counter Strike. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's subjective because there's data to back it up, and I would absolutely agree Counter Strike. Uh, look, okay, so what other what other similar type games are there to Counter Strike? You got your Halo. Ain't nobody play Halo One anymore. Uh, <laughs> what else? Because you there? have to be good to to win on Halo One. Like you, there's no there's no. Well, nobody no just there. nobody plays it. Nobody yeah. plays it anymore. That's because the kids want to Same play. thing with Quake. Quake Three was a similar type game from around those now times. Old Nobody. We no. Right now. I'm making a point here. No, I, I'm I making. Just, I'm making okay. a point. Okay, yeah. Quake Three. Nobody plays Quake Three anymore. Again, another game where it's completely based. Oh, That's the. That, you, that, you're stealing my thunder I'm here. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. My yeah. point is. Yeah, where are you going with this? Counter Strike has stood the test of time because it was simple. It was very, very simple. The map design, the gameplay mechanics, the whole thing about it. Because you can make the argument Counter Strike Go is a new game, but it's very, 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 very similar to the Counter Strike of what, what, 2000, 2001, whenever it was, the one that came out a long time ago. Yeah, CS Go is beautiful. It's cool. new. Like, they did. They, they've tweaked it since then, but it's very, very similar. It's, it's. They. No, they've, no one uh, gets anywhere in that game without a lot of time and a lot of effort. They've uh, they've they've stayed true to the the core principles that made Counter Strike amazing back in the day because it was very very simple. All these games now, Call of Duty, even Halo to some extent, basically it's it's getting it, they keep adding crap to it. They say, okay, great, we had it, we had a hit. A lot of people bought it. A lot of people love to play this thing online. Love to play it competitively. What more crap can we add into this? It's amazing to see like what what Modern Warfare is doing. It's just like it's. Oh, did you hear about the new Modern Warfare? There's there's crossbows in it this time. Oh. Yeah, it's, everything's oh. got a stupid gimmick. Like, especially Call of Duty. It's like, okay, now it's Call of Duty in space. Now <laughs> it's Call of Duty in, with cowboys. in the in the future. Now it's Call of Duty World War Two again. Now it's Call of Duty slightly in the future, but not very far in the future. Now it's Call of Duty way in the future. Steve, have you ever played Delta Force or Medal of Honor? I have not played either of them. I mean, I played, I played I played Delta Force on Wait, Delta your computer. Force. On Delta your Force. computer. I was gonna say I, that sounds familiar. Yep. That is old. And That's... it was a lot of fun. Wait, what not is Delta like Force? I didn't play like a ton, but it was it was enough to either. highly enjoy it. Uh, whoa, wait, what do we got here? 
Yeah, Delta Force was fun. Medal of Honor, I didn't play on PC, I'm, but I did play. I did rent it for PlayStation. I'm 32, by the way. I'm 32 years old. <coughs> Dang, Delta you're Force. so old. <coughs> Steve's younger. Steve was younger than me. Yeah. It was. Yeah. So anyway, so simple is more gooder. Keep it simple. Simple doesn't sell games though, and and neither does. It's, I, I'm it amazed doesn't that CS in the Go same is way. so popular as it is, like because it's so like ruthless. Like you Sim don't simple, you don't hop simple into CS Go and have fun. You hop into CS Go and get wrecked, and you either quit or you go. This is frustrating me. How do I get better at this? Simple, <coughs> simple uh, can still sell games, not in the same way that other games get sold, though. So, for example, um, well, I mean, no, you could you could make a simple Call of Duty, I think, and, and still make money. Like, if they went back, if they said, okay, we're gonna make a new Call of Duty, it's gonna be Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, Black Ops, uh, whatever, it's Ghost Protocol. But they went back and they're like, basically, if they went back and they made a sequel to the Modern Warfare, where basically it was the very same style, same gameplay mechanics, all new game. You know, it's not going to be a remake or a reboot, an all new game. But they went back to the same principles that made Modern Warfare fantastic. I think you'd sell quite a bit. I think you could. I think that would sell really well. I mean, the, the because original one what, did. Because what's the beef with Call of Duty these days? It's just, it's the same game every single year with just one little extra gimmick each time. Oh, hey, this time it's got a crossbow. This time even... it's slightly in the future. This time it's more in the future. This time it's like really far in the future <coughs> in space. I don't even know. Do, do, <coughs> is, is Call of Duty doing the whole, like, um, what do they call it? The pass? The, like, pay money to... Oh, the game pass? Yeah, they like, do the same crap, yeah. where it's like, hey, we got two new maps, you can buy it from us for eight bucks. Yeah, I remember... That's... Nobody... No. Stop charging money for maps, that's not a thing. I mean, what people it need to be do... It shouldn't be a thing. I mean, people need to stop buying the games. Like, I can't blame them. Like, if I owned... I, I, mean, I, I, I think... I think... This. If I owned I think EA, they are. I would hope so. <coughs> like, the, the market should decide that stuff. Like, I, there's nothing wrong with EA. There's nothing. Well, it could, be, it could be bad marketing. I don't know. Maybe it is. I hate EA, for the record. But there's I don't nothing think anyone's... wrong with them putting out a terrible product that asks people to give a lot of money. Especially if a bunch of morons are giving them a bunch of money. I'm going to die. <coughs> but people I don't think anyone's money. beef with EA <coughs> is... With them making money or them being a very very large company, I think everyone's beef is the the quality of content they're putting out, and that would definitely be my beef with them. They they are putting out very very low quality content. Well, I mean, um, it depends on they're putting amazing content. I mean, look, you've seen how good Battlefront Two looks. It's it's like the it the fact looks. That well, uh, by quality, I don't mean visual quality or I've sound quality. Like I that. haven't played it. I've heard the gameplay for Battlefield Two is actually pretty great too. Like, I, I, it's just the way that they structured it. Yes, and they could have had a really fantastic product <coughs> if they didn't have all their whole loot crate crap going on. If if the, so if they get, just never did that in the first place and it was just a normal game, you just play the game and unlock stuff the more you play. I, Battlefront 2, I think, could have been, could have been a, re a really good hit. Because if the gameplay were, if the graphics are amazing, if the gameplay was good, I think they could have really done really well with that. Oh, I would have bought it. I love Star Wars. Like I'm, I'm wearing. Oh Star yeah, Wars I would have right totally would have bought it. I love Star Wars, but like, I'm not buying. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not buying that. But that's that's because look at when's the last time you bought a Need for Speed game? Huh. Um, I can't. like the last time you paid money for a Need for Speed game. I can't honestly. Can't, or got uh, one for Christmas or you know whatever. It's probably like six years ago or something. Yeah, it's, and they've come up with several Need for Speed games since then. The problem is they're all just mediocre. <coughs> I'm gonna make him attack you. Attack Steven. 
because they come out with them all the time. It's so like, yeah, that, that's kind of that's that's one. the trap they fall into, like a lot of other companies. It's like, well, it, it's like eh, I don't want to get on, onto another Mind Arc rant, but it's very similar to Mind Arc, where it's like, hey, let's just we just want to make money, and so they just make this uh, decisions, uh, what they think are based on purely business, without considering what it is their customers actually want and will actually pay money for. You guys were talking about Chromecast earlier. I had a couple years ago. I used it to cast my phone and a TV, PlayStation One and sixty four. Oh, for emulators. Yeah, that's awesome. Ooh, that's a I good love, idea. I yeah. I'm, I didn't even think about emulators. Ooh, I, I that's think a I, really I think good I did idea. An NES emulator, Chrome. Cause, yeah, because you can like you can mirror your screen with screen. With I because I thought you about getting like one of those HDMI adapters. You can hook up a Bluetooth controller to your phone, and yeah. uh, Chromecast. That would be awesome. I, I planned on doing that and then getting like a like an HDMI adapter for my phone or for a tablet or something, but Chromecast, I did not think about that. That's that's interesting. Cause there's there's some fantastic like NES, SNES, N sixty four games you can play on your phone. I can't shoot. I'm out, my my gun is broken, so I'm using I'm, a, I'm using an Apollo on these things. Should we should we hit T? Nah, I'm good. I'll I'll you know I'm just I'm doing my thing. All right, you'll just shoot your Apollo and rant about things. Yeah, exactly. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. I don't know how we got started talking about that stuff, but... Where, was there some point I was trying to make? I can't remember. Wait a second, how do you play PS1 games on your Wii U? Does that require, like, a mod chip? I miss mod chips. I have a, I have a modded Xbox. <clears throat> Xbox, not... It's so hard to what? say. The original Xbox. I have a modded original Xbox, and that... Yeah. That was fun. Oh, man, mod chips. I remember I, uh... When I was a Wii lad... Good day, Jerry saved... Eve. Sorry. I uh, I saved up all my birthdays money, and I I came this close. I came super super close to buying. I so I was I was a big fan of Dragon Ball Z back in the day, and I saw they had a Dragon Ball Z game for PlayStation, and I was like, dude, I want this like super bad. The problem is it was released in Japan only, and to play a Japanese game on an American PlayStation. You needed like the little regional mod chip thing you plug in the back, yeah. which was like an extra like fifty bucks or whatever it was. So I came super close to buying the game and that chip, so that I could play that Dragon Ball game. And I didn't end up doing it because it ended up being like I think it was like ninety or hundred dollars altogether. I ended up not wanting to spend that much on just to play one game. But I, who man, did I come close? I want a mod. Do they have mods? I mean, do they have like? Uh, can you? Can you run like burnt discs or like? Can you download games to your hard drive on Xbox One or any of the newer? I. Stuff? I, I, that. I doubt it, and I would. Not I would that guess I that it's. I would recommend doing that because that would be legal. No, you don't want to steal anything. But I would. I would guess that it's actually incredibly difficult. Yeah. Because I I would imagine because these things are so online connected yeah and they have all these software updates that are always pushed to them and it checks in with servers and all that kind of stuff so often that I bet that makes it incredibly difficult to actually mod it these days. Yeah, I used to I have like a whole binder full of Xbox One uh, games that I own, but I burned them and. Uh, and back in the hey, day, at this Dreamcast, point, you at could this just point, burn that's a CDR. Uh, you could burn a CDR in Dreamcast and like. Yeah, now Dreamcast well. did have copy protection, but it was really easy to get around. So you could download ISOs that completely bypass that copy protection. And I'm sure. Three D O, on the other hand, zero copy protection, so you could just legit straight up one to one copy CDs. Like in your computer, like put it in there and just. Yeah, like, because there, there was zero copy protection on anything, so it was literally just. Do a clone a CD, you're good to go. With Dreamcast, that used the GD-ROM, like the one gigabyte 
CDs. Yeah. So, like, you could download certain games, but sometimes, like, they'd compress certain things or they'd remove certain cutscenes, like, so you could fit it on, a, like, a 700 meg. Yeah, so back in the day, this was back in the Kazaa days. Uh, yeah, so Greencast used a one gigabyte proprietary disc. But so, and they, they still do this uh, these days. Too. Well, maybe not these days because games are so big, but they did this for several years afterwards. What they would do, you have one gigabyte for your that you can store on the disc. <coughs> Let's say your game's only 200 megabytes. What they would do is they would put all the data on the outside of the disc. So they'd put like a bunch of no, like a bunch of zeros all the way up until where they needed to be, because the outside of the disc spins faster, so it would load faster. And so that's why if you go on Kazaa, you would download a Dreamcast game, and it was like a zip file of like 200 megabytes, and you unzip it, and it turns into one gig. That's why. Because it was the game was only a few hundred megs, but it was on the outside. They put it all on the outside of the disc. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I was chatting online. Oh yeah, yeah. We didn't. We came out here. We were here last week. These were all shared loot. So we came out here this week, and they're not shared loot anymore, which seems to always happen to us. <laughs> Every time. But, team but we just, we made a team and called it the good. I need to get an old Dreamcast. I would love to get another Dreamcast. I have, I have one of those. Wait. I do too, but the 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 disc the the disc player doesn't really work super well, so like most games don't load. Look at this, Dreamcast. I'm like, I got a Dreamcast. I got a GameCube. What all do I have in here? I don't even know. What I have. I'm not even hunting anymore. Oh yeah, I got my GameCube uh, somewhere back there. I got, I got my, my 3DO up there. My PS2. I got my SNES. What else? Is I need to go in the garage and find my SNES and my those out of the garage and holy cow this the the, the, the this ps3 is humongous this is a pre -slim. oh yeah, i got my old ps3, PS3 somewhere i got my newer ps3 in the bedroom still i've got, got my 3do got my atari got my ps1 what is what is this i got my 360 right here i have so many consoles here that are not put in i have two dreamcasts somewhere oh this thing this thing, you can't see my video, Steve, but this thing was... Is it the ColecoVision? No, I don't know. This, oh. this thing. This is my one of my Xboxes. And with this thing, check out this awesome screen. I played, like, three-player Halo in my mom's SUV driving on vacation with this thing. I forget. It's, it's got, like, a... The screen's, like, the size of my cell phone screen. It's, like, this big flip-up thing on my Xbox. Oh yeah, PlayStation One had that. So did GameCube. That's a similar thing. Remember the yeah the PS One that actually made sense because that thing wasn't humongous. Yeah, the Xbox is like a giant brick. I need to pull out all my old console garage. Need to get them out of the extreme cold and heat. I thought, I, I, I want to hook them all up to my TV, so I can like, play them whenever I want. That would be. Or awesome. I want to just create like a uh, like a uh, emulator. Thing with a bunch yeah. of USB adapted controllers or something. And I miss all those old consoles. They were, those were some good times. The Dreamcast, the PS2. I think my ColecoVision, like, I don't know where that is. I, I, I haven't seen that in years. Oh man, that was fun. We got that from a thrift store. And then didn't know how to work it. Oh, I died. I'm totally not paying attention. Shared Fefoid waves. The waves are part. Is that the waves you're talking about? Is that the uh, super high level stuff that um, Orchimaru was what's talking a, what's about? What's a what's a wave? Um. We probably won't do that because I think we're probably going to hop off somewhat soon. Um, I think it's an instance with like really big peps. 
Oh, that'd be fun to do. We probably won't do it tonight, but it'd be fun to do it in the future. Alright, uh, let me see if I can... I'm trying to figure out this giveaway thing. Decided to bust this out. We, we got the go. classic. Nice. Atari twenty six hundred. I don't own. What does that say? Those. Video computer system. We got the nice, fantastic wood finish. And your giant which is which oh wow, that's a that's a sticky switch. I need to see if this thing still works. This thing you got, you got your TV type. You can turn it to color, or to black and white if you prefer. You got your what does this one do? Uh, left controller, uh, game select, for some reason, because that's how you selected games, I guess, back then. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I just thought I'd bust this out because this is I like this guy. He's, I very much enjoy like vintage video game stuff. I I should get one of those. Uh, what do those cost on eBay? I, that's a good question, because I'd love to get more than one, just to have. Because it's, it's, oh man, this... I love, like, old video game and old technology, just because this, this was, like, state-of-the-art at one point, and this was before I was alive, but... This was, like, some kid... Woke up on Christmas morning and was stoked AF to find this under the tree. And it was, that's just, it's just really fascinating to me to, to think about, like, how that things were back then. at some point. Like yeah. That, and that cost, what, 400 What was that? Like, I think, adjusted for inflation, it was probably, like, yeah, three or four. Oh, and then... Wait, introductory price was... One ninety nine equivalent to seven hundred eighty six dollars in two thousand sixteen. Then you compare it to this, and I was very excited to find this under the tree. It's like night a night and day different. That, that was five like, ninety nine, right? And that was a blue. That was a not Blu ray. That was a this DVD player, which was yeah DVD. No, it was like three hundred four hundred bucks. I can't remember. Wait, what? Hold on. A PS two? It was not five hundred dollars. There's no way. But this was, and the only difference between this and and this yeah, is what's inside of it. Like, uh, the, the style and design of things always fascinate me. Just because, like, the only reason this looks way more modern and fancy is some guy just made it that way. Like, there's nothing stopping anyone in 1970-whatever, 80, 70? I can't, I don't know. I wasn't alive. There's nothing stopping them from making that Atari look like this. And I bet you in about... Another ten years or so, this is gonna look super. It already kind of does look aged, like look, like with the, like like the ridges and stuff. It definitely kind of already looks aged. I mean, to me, it looks still really hot and sick, nasty. But to some young kid, it probably looks aged. Also, you got your, you got your, you got your normal network connection like you see these days, and then you got the kids these days don't know your. You get your 56k dial-up right there. That's how you play online. You could play SOCOM 2 with 56k, couldn't you? Yep, SOCOM 2, and then I don't have a screwdriver. You take this thing out, and inside there is the hard drive, or a hard drive. And Wait, PS2 had a hard drive? I don't know if I knew that. You could add a hard drive. Oh, okay. But you needed a network adapter. It's kind of bizarre, but this thing, man, this was... The PS2 was a good system. I remember also it was really crazy and revolutionary that they had uh, USB ports on here. That was that was a new thing. 
That was a good console, though. That was one of my faves of all time. What are we doing? I I am currently trying to figure out how to do uh, giveaways on Nightbot, and it doesn't. Nightbot seems to be being stupid. So I'm I'm pulling up a random. September uh, 11th, 1977 is when the Atari came. 77. Yeah, dude, the Atari is old AF. 70. That's. That was yeah. It was eleven years before I. Was because born. the what, what was the next big console? Because it was the NES, right? Because I I mean they came out with other Ataris, but like video gaming. I I remember there was a there was a gaming uh, there was there was the big crash after ET came out, and it was the any the gaming didn't really come back until uh, the NES, which I think was what was the NES like eighty. 385 something like that uh nes 80 what wait i want to say it was I like thought 85. NES was 85 i thought i pretty sure i want to say 85 yeah and then the snes was like 91 there was there was a big gap between consoles back then and then so the nes was like 91 and the next big one was 64 which is 96 if i remember correctly and then, but the genera that generation started before that. PlayStation was ninety four or five. Three DO was ninety three. Dreamcast was ninety nine. In America, you you keep talking. I'm I'm trying to figure something. Okay, out. okay. I'll I'll go story. through my knowledge of console of release history. I'm just Dreamcast I'm, was. It was ninety nine. It was nine nine ninety nine in America. Just okay. So here's what you know. It's weird, and this this, this this seems weird today. The Dreamcast was released nearly uh, a year. It was released in Japan, and it wasn't released in, in America until nearly a year later. So it had been out in Japan for almost a year before it came to America. You know where I played the Dreamcast for the first time? Uh, Electronics Boutique. Nope. Disney oh. World. Disney World? I was at I... Disney World. No one can see. Me. I was at Disney World. And they had this thing set up where you, you could. It was like some Sega booth where Sega paid Disney World a bunch of money. And, um. We're done hunting now, by the way, in case anyone's. Wondering. Yeah. Um, we didn't really. We just kind of died and we stopped. Uh, we were at yeah. Disney World, they had some Sega thing, and I remember walking in, and they had a bunch of Dreamcast set up, and I walked up, and I picked up a controller, and it said Shenmue, and I'm like, what is this? And I remember running around, and I was like, this is awesome, and then the next Christmas I got Shenmue, I got a Dreamcast and Shenmue, and that still is one of my favorite games of all time. I What's remember, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Because it was, it was mind something. There was, in in the mall, there was this new fancy internet cafe gaming type place that opened up. It was a really big elaborate place, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. It was mind something or something mind. I want to say it. I uh, I should know. I should remember that. It was mind something. And they had uh, they had a Dreamcast there that you could go in and um, and play. Also, Electronics Boutique down the way there at the mall had it as well. That's turned into EB Games for all you kids out there. Used to be called Electronics Boutique. What was the name of that cafe? All right. Uh, if 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 you're watching right now. Say something in the chat so I know you're here. I wanna, um, I'm gonna do a wrap. Yeah, my, yeah, mind, mind map. It was like I wanna say like mind, mind. It wasn't mind storm, but it was something along those lines, like something like that. I can't remember. It was like a weird gaming cafe thing, and of course, no, no none of those internet gaming cafe places have ever lasted longer than. Okay. But it was something like that, and they, they had a Dreamcast there, and like you know your your N64s, your PlayStations, all that kind of stuff. 
Yes, Breakout for Atari. One of the best games. I still have a copy somewhere. I still have the little paddle controller twisted. and That was fantastic. It was Breakout, and there was some space game I really liked playing, too, and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it, it seemed really advanced for its time. Uh, what was it? It was like Space Adventure or something like that? Or Space Commander? But yeah, Breakout. Breakout was one of the best ones. Breakout. Uh, oh, it wasn't not Bomberman. It was one where you had the you had the, the buckets and you had to move it back and forth and you'd catch the bombs as they fell. Is it just called Bomber? No, that doesn't sound right. It wasn't Bomberman. That's a different game. What was what All was right. the bomb catching game? Wait, I think I know uh, what you mean, but I don't know what the name is. Yeah, it's like Bomber. Was it Bomb? No, it can't be just Bomber. Bomber Atari. No, not Canyon Bomber. Maybe it wasn't called Bomber. Maybe it was called, like, Bucket Catch. Kaboom! Yes! It was Kaboom. That was a really fun one. I really enjoyed that one. All right, um, I got I got a random generator thing here. Okay, you, you doing stuff? Let's give some things away, because I have... What are we giving away? I've got Terraria in, I've got Terraria in my uh, in my Steam library, and I, I get an extra one. And, that sounds uh, good. So. I was trying to make it so... For whatever reason, OBS is any time I try to open up, whether it's Edge or Chrome, any web any web browser is just a black screen. So that's being dumb. But I do have a thing here, and I've got a random picker. And what's your raffle off, Terraria? Yeah, Terraria sounds good. All right, that's a fun game. All right, here we go. Are you guys ready for this? I am ready. See, you're ready. I am so ready. I am super ready. Pick a random item. I'm ready AF. Pick a random what? Orchimoru. You want Terraria. Do you own Terraria? Do you want Terraria? If you don't want it or if you own it already, we have other things. It's like 2D Minecraft. I own it and I've never played it, but I have extra ones. Do you want it or do you want something else? Steve has other goodies. Steve, what goodies do you have? Do I you, do you I don't know for sure. I think I have uh, The Sims 3, which I think is old now. Um, and some kind of... Is that like an origin uh, case? I think so, or it's some kind of Assassin's Creed game. Hang on, let me let me let me check my list of things here. That's yeah, not it. Hang on. Ooh, hang on. No, I I got it. Let's see. What do we got here? I got. Um. Oh, I have Assassin's Creed, which is old now, but I got that one. Assassin's Creed Chronicles Russia, Assassin's Creed Chronicles China, Assassin's Creed Chronicles India. I don't know what that means. He so wants Terraria. Assassin's... Stop talking, Steven. Okay. He wants All right. Never mind. All right. Okay. Uh. All right. Sweet. Um. You can just message me in the Discord with your Steam or on or on Twitch or whatever with your Steam name, and I can gift it to you. Um, let's give away one more thing. I'm gonna give away. Um, what is it called? It's an amazing game. It's actually pretty good. It's currently ten dollars on Steam. 
and it's very old. Is it old. Shower with Your Dad Simulator? No. Does that cost $10? I think we paid oh, I hope not. Money. I don't think we paid I, that much money for it. I am now going to give away Defense Grid. Uh, it's a tower defense game. Ooh. And it's... I don't know why it's in my Steam in inventory, but it is, and I'm not going to play it. So... If anyone else is in the chat, let me know. Okay. I'm going to roll this. Do you want to know who it is? Uh, sure, yes. Yes. Is it Calzoid. me? Yeah. Whoa. Hey! Yo! Hey! Dude. How do you You're feel here. right now? You just won. <laughs> you just won a game with an MSRP of nine dollars and ninety nine cents on Steam. I mean, I you should feel just, amazing right now. That's, wow, that's quite the accomplishment. Do you? Do you? Even I want am that? jealous. Do I you, am jealous. Do you even want that? I'm gonna send it to you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably just sit in my game library forever. Yeah, that's what that's. What hey, doing some now. of us pay money for that privilege. <laughs> yeah, I paid money for a lot of my games to sit in my Steam library. <laughs> uh, last game I got was uh, Stellaris, and I got it at a fifty percent discount. So, yeah. Oh, nice. uh, oh, and yeah. the Steam sales get you, don't they? Uh, it wasn't actually a Steam sale; it was a oh. third-party key giveaway. Oh. Okay. Uh... Yeah, I, I always, every every holiday season, I buy a lot of Steam games that I don't play. Which reminds me, I yeah. bought Metal Gear Solid Five last Christmas, and I need to play that. Cause oh, I you did? Thoroughly enjoy That game is, uh, I really, I'm a big Metal Shoot, Gear Solid Shoot, now player. I want that game. I want Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, there's several Steam games I've bought that I've, I literally have never even installed. Um, yeah, my, st my Steam is the same as on here. It's Talzoid. Okay, sweet. Um, I will send that after the stream. And, uh, yeah. Cool. So, I think we're about done. I think we're, yeah. we're gonna, uh, we're gonna give you guys a preview of a rap song we're working on, which Ooh. is, uh, pretty fantastic. This is a world exclusive. This is the first time this has been played anywhere. Now, this is... I, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a meme song that we made. It's a, it's a, a badass rap song. And it's ridiculous. It's the best rap song you've ever heard it's, in your it's life. It's a rap song about a guy who sells vacuums door to door. If you want any <laughs> okay. backstory, that search Bertie O'Neill on YouTube. He's yes. got a YouTube channel. His name is Bertie O'Neill. Here's a picture of him right here. Got it all queued up. And I'm going to leave this with you guys I'm gonna play this and uh it's been good have a good night guys <laughs> till next time no this is what it is we cleared houses and popping blouses Diablo shall they all DJ Birdie Beats Productions <laughs> Suck like everything from the trash out. Feels money here, my black flag. Yeah. I like cream cheese. I'm gonna come clean these carpets, please. Dirt devil. Grapefruit. Pink salute. Another one. Another level. Interesting. Play up, play up, play up.
Anything else just got me cringing. Empathic knowledge got me banging. So much better than putting this arranging. 